Welcome back to Living Local. Many people will travel thousands of miles for pilgrimages to holy sites around the world, but we have a sacred place right here in Hawaii, and that's just an inner island flight away. You may have noticed these famous figures of Hawaii's history from time to time at the state capitol, overlooking Kualo Basin, and perhaps even at a new heritage center recently dedicated in Waikiki. Many locals know these saintly icons as Father Damien and Mother Marianne. We who live here in Hawaii are very blessed and very privileged to uh, be the heirs of the story of Father Damien and Mother Marianne, who served the poorest and the most needy among us. They gave up everything. They left home, their family, everything. And they went out, they went thousands and thousands of miles to help people they didn't even know. Growing up in Hawaii, we've all heard the amazing stories of their work with the lepers on Molokai. So when the opportunity came to fly to Kalaupapa, I couldn't pass up the chance for my very first pilgrimage. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kalaupapa. It's a small community with a population of about 100. There's a gas station that's open once a week, a general store, and even a post office. Surrounded by unobstructed ocean views, majestic sea cliffs, and the occasional Hawaiian monk seal, it really is a beautiful and peaceful place with a tragic yet inspiring past. The first thing you'll notice upon entering the settlement are the thousands of graves marking those who have died from leprosy, now known as Hansen's disease. During the outbreak of the mid-19th century, the sickness was highly contagious and incurable. Those diagnosed with the disease were banished here to Kalaupapa. This place has always been sacred to me, uh, always will be. Uh, I mean, I'm walking in the land where saints walked. The history began in the mid-1800s with the arrival of the first patients uh, that were basically uh, dropped off here without really any supplies or anything. Damien got here in the 1860s. With the lack of understanding about leprosy, many people felt that even touching them would, would uh, allow them to become lepers also. So they would literally unload them into the sea and many of them would have to find their way away to the waves to come to shore as well. I think for many of us to, to know that many children were put in that predicament and just to see how heart-wrenching it would have been for them, fear and everything else to come to this place and be um, banished or exiled for the rest of their lives. Long before Father Damien arrived, people lived in caves and lava tubes like this. But by the late 1800s, Damien was instrumental in building homes, churches, and schools. He constructed a water system, planted trees, and cared for the children, the elders, and the dying, and even dug graves to honor the dead. As a youngster, we grew up with the familiar name of Damien, and I think more so for me was the fact that he really came and helped those who, especially our Hawaiian people, who came and really felt that they had no support system. Father Damien eventually died of leprosy himself in 1889. He was canonized as Hawaii's first saint in 2009. Father Damien's burial site has become a sacred place here in Kalaupapa. Visitors from around the world come to this exact spot to pray for a miracle. Many prayers for miracles have also been made here on the leeward side of the settlement at Blessed Mother Marianne's Memorial. She was the first woman missionary leader to care for Hansen's disease patients in Hawaii. At the urgent request of King Kalakaua and Queen Kapi'olani, Marianne arrived in Honolulu in 1883 and served the lepers at the Kaka'ako Branch Hospital. Five years later, she moved her mission to Kalaupapa. There, she comforted Father Damien at his deathbed and made a promise that she and her sisters would carry on the work that he began. The more I read about her, the more I pray to her, um, I, I'm just amazed, totally amazed. Besides bringing professional hospital care and infection control, she brought a woman's touch to the town, fixing landscapes, sewing clothes, and celebrating local culture. It was to create a sense of community, of improving the quality of life, and treating everyone with dignity and respect. 
Marianne died peacefully at the age of 80 in 1918. She was beatified in 2005 and is one step away from being canonized a saint. Hawaii probably would be the only state in the United States that has two saints um, and coming from the same area, which is, um, you know, Kalapapa Molokai. It really shows the essence of the importance um, of Kalapapa and the patients that were there. Today, Kalaupapa is a national historic site and will be administered by the Department of Health until the last patient is gone. Residents are no longer forced to live here. They stay because they want to. Because it's just like my home. I've been there, you know, so many years now and it's, it's my second home. It's a beautiful place, I can say. And if anything happens, if I should, I told my parents, I said, I don't want to live there. I'm going to die there. And through the legacy of Damien and Marianne, many hope that Kalaupapa will always remain a peaceful place of beauty and inspiration. Oh, the story of Father Damien always gives me chicken skin. Always. Just That's so such a selfless. great story. I have never been there, and I need to get there soon. Yeah. It was my dream to go there, so thank you um, for the blessings that I was able to go, and hopefully that um, you guys will share that with me one yes. day. We'll, we'll go back. Love to.